G'day guys, my name's Alex, I'm a sports physiotherapist and I'm going to show you 8 exercises that you can do for upper back pain. These are going to be exercises and stretches that are easy to do at home or in a gym. The first part of the video are stretch and mobility exercises that you can do for pain relief and the second half of the video is going to be an exercise that you can do to make yourself more robust and strong and help to prevent that pain. So first things first, if you have back pain from doing too much, adding more exercises on top of everything else isn't probably going to make it feel any better. Often we have to deload or take a step back and reduce aggravating activities first. Once you do this, we can dive into these exercises. Right, so let's do number one. There is a number of reasons we can get upper back pain, but two common reasons are one, doing a repeated activity too many times, and the other is we've had an accident, so we've been tackled or we've fallen over and we've hit our back, and either way, our joints in our back might be a little bit inflamed and sore and sorry for themselves. A nice way to start the rehab process is some gentle rotations, which is what I'm doing here in the video. The kneeling position is a nice place to start. It just allows us to get some reasonable rotation range of motion. I do allow myself to bend through my opposite elbow to allow my arm to thread the needle through the gap. I do these bottom half rotations for patients in the very acute phase because their joints in their back might be too inflamed to do a closing pattern, which is what I'm going to be doing right here. So when I turn over, the joints actually get a little bit more compressed in a very natural and normal way, but when they're inflamed and sore, this can be provocative. When my patients are sore and they're doing a new exercise, I get them to think of, does this feel good as I do it and do I get relief? afterwards. If there's the answer is yes, then this is a good exercise for them to do. If the answer is no, then it's up for discussion. One such alternative is the cuff stretch as seen here. Pull across the body with one arm. With the arm that's being pulled across the body, make sure you drop your shoulder into the stretch. So I should be dropping my right shoulder down here. So as you can see, we're doing lots of rotations and the third exercise is no different. This is one to do when lying on your back and it's to get full rotation range through your thoracic spine, plus you get a little bit of stretch in your pec as you do it. Start on one side, keep your top leg pinned to the ground as much as possible, turning over onto the other side. So when setting up, really be on your shoulder. When you reach back with the opposite arm, try to get your thumb turning over and coming towards the ground. This is really going to open yourself up and then with your opposite arm you're just making sure that top leg doesn't move. A more advanced version of this is a kneeling rotation often seen in yoga and Pilates classes at times. Just pop the arm on the outside of the leg twisting, turning and just getting that rotation stretched through your upper back. Another option to get this rotation is seated. It's doing the same thing, it's just that some people may find different positions better for them and I just want to give you some options to achieve the same thing. You don't need to do all of these rotation exercises. The idea is that you pick one or two that are comfortable for you and your specific injury because not everyone's going to be the same. Everyone's back pain is going to be different and it's important that we recognize that and we have modifications to allow you to get your range of motion back and reduce your level of pain. Now moving on to our last stretch is doing a cobra. Now this is pure thoracic extension. Try to make sure that your hips are flat on the ground and my lumbar spine isn't the prime reason I can get off the ground. I'm trying to arch through my upper back as much as possible, but I am quite stiff myself. And as such, I'm probably not the best example. Just pick a range of motion that's comfortable. So you can see I've done three positions. Arms further out is easier. As the arms come in, it is much harder. Pick the position that you can feel a stretch in your upper back the most, not in your lower back. Our first strength exercise to do, and this can be done early on in the process. We don't have to wait until we've done all the stretches to start doing these exercises. This is a simple rotator cuff strengthening exercise called an external rotation. Grab the band, try to pull it apart, but keep the elbows in as much as possible. My next exercise to improve back strength is just a normal standing row or seated row as you would see in the gym. The reason for doing a row is to build up strength around the muscles and joints that are sore in our back. The more capacity or strength that you have, the more resilient your back will be. So having this in your exercise routine is a must. We can look at targeting our back with a single arm motion. We can look at doing basic arm retractions. Now, it looks like my shoulder is just moving by itself, but I am thinking about my shoulder blades as well. Every time I pull back, I think about squeezing my shoulder blades together. Much like when you do a normal row, I'm trying to work one arm by itself. 
We can do this exercise above 90 degrees of shoulder height or below 90 degrees of shoulder height. Just think, are you someone that gets pain when doing overhead activities like basketball, like throwing sports, or if you're a painter or an electrician, this might mean this exercise is more appropriate for you. Now, don't get me wrong, doing elastic band exercises are a great introduction to getting strong, but it doesn't really replace gym equipment moving a heavier weight a bit more so i do like to get my patients to do heavier dumbbell rows single arm you get rotation you get strength the entire back gets worked and i like to get as many patients as i can doing chin-ups it's a great way to develop really strong upper back shoulder and arm muscles and once again the purpose of this is building up strength and capacity around your body and specifically your back to allow you to do all the activities that you want to do more safely and more efficiently. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you don't want to miss out on any other ones as they come out, just hit that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date. It was nice to see you guys again. I'll chat to you soon. Bye for now.